In early 2006, LightWave user Howard M. shared a really amazing technique with the LightWave community about how to tear apart cloth. Uh, I thought uh, it would be fun to recreate it and then take a look at how to set it up. So here in the scene, I've got this uh, Tofu comic book cover. I'm going to go ahead and push play. And as you can see, uh, it gets kind of shredded on one side and then torn in uh, several areas and the pieces float off. Uh, and it's a, it's a really fun animation. And what makes it even better is that it's really easy to set up. So I thought we would, could take a look at how to use cloth effects and, uh, and a really cool setting called start by event to, uh, to get this going. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this and we'll head over to Modeler uh, to, uh, to build the pieces that we need to put this together. Let's start by creating the, uh, the comic book cover. I'm going to start with create box and we'll just create a similar shape to what we had before. Uh, maybe make it a little taller. Okay, and before I commit to this, I'm going to go ahead and add some segments just so that it can uh, deform properly. So I'm using the up arrow key to add some segments here and I'll use the right arrow key to add some segments here. Okay, this will be our our cover before we put the image on there what I need to do is I need to pre-cut the surface and there's lots of different ways to go about doing that I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, uh, a technique using the drill tool just so that we can take a look at the drill tool over in layer 2 I'm gonna put layer 1 in the background and I'm gonna come over to create and we'll use the pen tool all I'm really creating is a shape of of where I want the tear to be Okay, so I'll have it come into here and get a couple jaggies in there. Okay, just some kind of shape. Now I'm going to go ahead and surface this, uh, this object here. And I'm just going to call it Cutter. And we'll make it blue. Okay. And then we'll swap our layers. And now we're going to surface this, the main page. Let's call this Paper. And for just for fun we'll make it green okay now what I want is I want to stencil this shape on to the surface so with it in the background I'm gonna come over to the construct tab choose drill in the y-axis I'm gonna choose stencil and we used cutter as the surface name but we can choose any surface that we've already uh, got names but we'll use cutter okay so what that does is not only does it put the surface on there but if we go let's go full screen just so we can take a look you can see that it's sliced in to the geometry okay and we'll take advantage of that in order for this to deform properly it wouldn't hurt if we go ahead and triple the surface so shift T we will convert this to, to triangles now in order for this to tear properly we need to separate the two surfaces meaning if I select this polygon and hit select connected uh, it shouldn't select both of these so I'm gonna I'm going to select just the surface now I could go in and carefully select all these polygons but it'd be easier if I went over to W for statistics and where it says surf that's surface pick the surface that you want click this little plus sign and it'll select all the polygons that that have that surface name so I'm going to cut and paste now I want multiple pieces so I'm gonna go ahead and select some of that and cut and paste and I'll select some of this and then I'll cut and paste so here's our main piece here's a piece here's a piece and here's a piece and that'll work we don't want to merge these we want we definitely want them separate let's go ahead and put on uh, the the cover image so I'm gonna make this all one surface so that we won't let people know that this is actually multiple pieces we'll make it look like one piece so let's call this comic cover and we'll turn smoothing on while we're at it come over to the surface editor comic cover T for texture editor planar we'll pick the comic book cover we'll map it in the Y axis and choose automatic sizing so it'll fit it to the bounding box of our our comic book 
Okay, with that uh, set up, we're ready to move over to layout once we save this. So file, save object, and we'll call this comic cover, and I'm going to go ahead and say rip just so that we know that it's not just a plain old comic cover. And uh, I'll give a version number, 001, save. Let's send that over to layout so we can uh, get to animating. So send object to layout. And here we go. Now, it also sent over our cutter object. I don't want to I don't want to not have that because I could always go back and use it, but I don't need it in the scene. So I'm just going to remove that from the scene. So we have our comic and now we just need to cut it up. So I'm going to go over to texture shaded solid wireframe so I can see where the cut takes place. Okay? And let's add a collision object to travel through this path. So I'm going to come over to Dynamic Object, Collision. We'll just leave Collision fine because we're only going to use one. You can use multiple um, Collision Objects in this uh, setup if you want, but we'll just use one. For Mode, we're going to change it from Bounce to Event. We're going to have an event take place. And we'll go ahead and use the, the default size. So let's go ahead and set up our animation. We'll do a real quick and dirty animation. Uh, so on frame 0, I'm going to have the Collision Object out here on frame 10. Let's go ahead and have it there as well. Then we'll come over frame 20 and we'll start traveling through the shape. Uh, and then on frame 30, I'm going to size it up a little bit. And I'm going to size that. I'm going to size that down a little bit over here. So it kind of grows, fills up that space, and on frame 40, we'll move forward a little bit, like so, and then on 45, we'll move out of the way. So we're almost hitting all of the points, okay? And the reason why I sized it up, I just want to show you that you don't have to necessarily go in a certain order. You just need to touch the points that you want to start using the dynamics. Okay, so we'll have this, something like that. Okay, but not that it really matters, not that our timing is uh, all that planned out here, but I'm just going to use the dope track to shift some of these keys back. Okay, that works. Okay, so now all we have to do, since we have this set up, I'm going to go to Texture, Shaded Solid. We don't need to see those lines anymore. It's going to be more about what's going on with our our tear. So let me get it into place. The only thing we have left really is to set up our dynamics and calculate. So select the object, P for properties, uh, dynamics, add dynamic, add cloth. Click to open that up. And we're going to go to collision. Let's make sure that everything about this object will um, take advantage of collision. And then right here where it says fix by event, we're going to select that and say start by event. Make sure that it's active with the check mark there. So what that means is that when this event passes through these points, it will start it'll it'll start the cloth dynamics but only on those points. Okay? I'm going to move over to let's do um, let's add gravity. So for uh, for gravity, we're going to actually put it in reverse. Instead of negative 9.8, which I usually use for real world, real world gravity, I'm going to just type in 20. Just something to just send. It's going to be pulling those points up once they, uh, once they start taking advantage of cloth dynamics. And for preset, I'm just going to choose cotton thick. But um, as always, if I don't like the result, I can come in here. All, the, all those presets are doing is dropping in some, some basic figures here as a starting point. Okay, so 20 uh, meters for gravity in the Y, preset cotton thick, depends on the size of your object, depends on what your setup is. Let's go ahead and calculate. There we go. So we have it just rip through the points. Now, what I did, I, inten I intentionally did, is not hit these last ones right here, but hit it enough to split between here. So what I'll do is instead of 60 frames, I'm going to go for, um, let's do 90 frames, just so we have a few more, which means I'm going to need to recalculate. But I'm also going to turn on in the surface editor 
for the comic book cover, I'm going to turn on double-sided. It'll make it easier to see in the window. Now, if I wanted to, I could go into the note editor and take advantage of the polygon side option so that I could have two different images. But for this, let's just focus on the dynamics. So we'll go ahead and calculate, rips through, pulls that stuff up. Now, it's the gravity that's pulling those points up, and they're tugging, so it's kind of giving a neat effect. Let's, um, let's see it from a, from a different angle. So I'll push play. Cutter rips through there, pulling the points up. Now it's not affecting any of this because if I wanted that affected, I'd actually have to have the, the event item pass over those points. Now also, I can add wind to this if I wanted to, to dress it up. I can add all kind of different wind emitters, uh, collision objects, all kind of stuff. But for this, this is just really showing how you can rip apart, whether it's cloth or paper. If you don't like the, the motion on this, you can always go and adjust the, um, the settings in cloth dynamics. But as you can see, in very little time, we've got paper ripping, shredding off of this and, and floating away. If you want, uh, you can change the pattern, but it needs to be a, a pre-cut pattern. Uh, Dynamics won't know what to do if you don't already set it up, and it needs to be separate pieces. So hopefully that'll give you some ideas of how to take advantage of this uh, amazing technique. And uh, there you go, ripping paper.